start with a flow move because one of the pe one of the one of the problems that people have is that they say, well, how can I get that material out? And one of the problems is sculpting the material uh, on the tooth surface. So when I sculpt it, sculpt the paste material on, it tends to come away. Well, number one, you should be using uh, titanium coated blades like the instruments we use, which are the Cosmodent instruments, which are really tremendous. I, we love them because they come in all. Uh, we have we have the shapes and forms that will get you underneath the free margin as well as for application. Uh, you need an instrumentation system like that. Number two, when you're when you're sculpting material, you should always, always be sculpting into the sulcus when you start with the. You should apply it, sculpt into the sulcus first, not away from the sulcus. That will that will also help you. But the third thing that really helps me is I always start with a flow of a microfill and underfill it, and so and it's easier to fill uh, to place composite to composite. So we use a very light coat, but you want to underfill it. We do it very slowly. And we don't need a lot. I didn't come down here where you can see little margins. I have complete control with this stuff. Because I want to put the paste material over the top of it. But this is going to help the paste material go on rapidly. And we twin rise it for about 60 or about 40 seconds is all you need on this. Now, once the global microfill is in place, we can easily adapt the composite. I put it in a roll of a convenience form. You can look on the end of it. And I use my fingers all the time. You'll see that. And I'm just going to apply the material and I'll put it to place. And I can mold it. I can shape it. Your gloves are clean and dry and there's no, no powder on them. It does not contaminate the material. You don't have to. That is a myth. You can touch this material all you want. Nothing's going to happen. Go ahead. And we use light. I'm not a brusher. I'm a sculptor. If you want a brush, you can. I don't. You can see I'm going to take this past the long bevel and blend it up onto the tooth surface. Everything is done very gently. That, that's just a little too wet, but and you can see how I'm adding this, sculpting it, shaping it, taking it down just slightly beneath the free margin, blending it on a two surface, and using very light touch. You don't need heavy touch. You don't need to compress this material. The material is already compressed. You don't need to do that. So. I've got the hand, I, my hands are like the hands of a sculptor. I'm molding and shaping. You see how the tooth is taken. Can you see that under the camera? Because I'm not looking. And I'll switch, switch to a really fine bladed instrument, which is an IP, IPC short bladed. It's almost like a razor blade. And you can bring this material into the intercroxal. I'm going to use this material to close down these margins completely. Because people say, you know, and you will get some polymerization shrinkage with the material. And so to make sure that I get away from polymerization shrinkage, I've always done this, is that I've always taken another ellipse of material around any margin, whether it's a gingival margin or wherever it is, or in a proximal margin, and to close down, make sure I close down those margins. So I'll sculpt against already ready pre-polymerized material. This material actually started to polymerize underneath a light source that, that they're using for the camera. That's not completely polymerized, but that's okay. It's polymerized enough. Since we're doing them uh, together, okay, or we're restoring them all together at the same time, I want to make sure that there's no material, that does, one material doesn't stick to the other. So what we have to do is make sure that the proximal portion of this is nice and smooth. Here we're going in with a a flexi diamond strip, which is a 15 micron strip. It's a real fine micron strip. Then we follow it with a, give me a, uh, with an aluminum oxide thin one. So, and we do use the reason we're using a narrow strip is because we don't want to violate the the, the integrity of the gingival margin. We'll go ahead and here, and we'll we will use the fine, and then follow it up with a super fine. 
That way, these materials cannot stick together, period.